Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Sonic and the Sidekicks. This is our annual two-day event focused on the Sonic the Hedgehog series, and with this theme, we've been focusing on the colorful collection of characters and critters that might be his friends, or I guess in the ga uh, case of this game, frenemies, uh, rather than the blue, bl uh, blue blur himself. Uh, just a reminder to everyone that if you are watching this on YouTube, press the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel, and if you miss out on any of our other shows or events, check out the VODs on youtube.com forward slash games done quick. I'm joined by the wonderful Dillcat and Ariel as we um, go into our finale of the uh, of the event. This is going to be Sonic Riders Zero Gravity's Babylon story. Uh, so we don't get too many Sonic Rider runs around here, so I'm very excited to have this on board. Still, Cat, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I'm glad I got to be the finale. That's, uh, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to have you here for that. And uh, uh, Ariel, how are you as well? I'm doing pretty well. I'm happy to be here. Commentating like one of my favorite games of all time, so I'm very excited. All right. Well, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead. Um, give us a countdown uh, for going into. I believe you're going into story mode for the Babylon side. Yeah. Uh, you can mode. go ahead and count us in to get that timer started. All right. Yeah, I'm ready. So we can just start whenever. All right. Go ahead and count us in. All right. Three, two, one, go. Good luck, have fun. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm not gonna be, I'm gonna skip in all the cutscenes. So there's like a really weird story to this game, like weirder than the first game. So you don't get to find out what the context is if you, unless you read the. All right, so this is the first track in the game out of six that will be in this Babylon Story speedrun. And right away, Dilcat will be performing a gravity dive, which is that wide base gravity action you just saw a performer and a gravity control at that statue. And now that, that's already I wanted to um, digest, so I'll explain it real quick. So a gravity dive basically, and gravity control. Oh yeah, okay, we don't got unlucky with the items, that's really cool. unfortunately. But essentially, you'll see it again here, you'll do the same actions. But essentially, on the bottom left, you can see that Dilcat has a GP gauge, gravity, which GP means gravity points to be clear. And those are used up by uh, gravity dives and gravity controls. So in the beginning, you saw that he aimed towards the statue. And because the game, I don't know why, we don't know exactly why this happens, but the game is very glitchy. So in that case, it just propelled him upwards and to go, oh, yeah. make him go through the statue. <laughs> yep. And yeah, and with his gravity control, he was able to redirect himself back onto the track, saving a few seconds. The first one is not worth going for all three laps because he didn't. He doesn't have enough GP to conserve it to do the second one, which saves a lot more time. So yeah, this is the main priority, getting this second uh, shortcut done all three laps. And also, like, and this second one, not going. this saves like around 15 seconds per lap. It's pretty huge. And I haven't explained this yet, but Dill has been collecting rings throughout the track. And on the top left, you can see that he has like three like kind of power ups. We'll call those gear changes. Gears are the vehicles, by the way, to make that clear. So the most important one for this run. Well, for this track at least, will be the grind one, the grind gear change, which is unlocked by getting 50 rings. And that will be utilized, that same uh, gear change will be utilized later on as well for future tracks. As um, it is a good way to earn your GP back. Another way you've seen Dill already earn his GP back is doing tricks. Um, you'll mainly see him do S, SS, and X tricks. The more, the better the tricks, uh, the more GP you earn. So yeah, that, that's a mouthful already, <laughs> <Yep>. but <laughs> I, I needed to somewhat explain that in a short time frame. So yeah. So this is the next track, Nightside Rush. And in the beginning here, you won't see much going on. The 
chose Bill collecting rings. Oh, I forgot to explain that this, what Dil just did was, would be a bike only um, path usually, which is unlocked using 50 rings. But he waited for the robots to get ahead of him first, so he could take that path for himself. I did that, but he, I did that I am pretty, pretty slow. I could have saved a lot more time, but I like waited a really long time to get on the boost corner, but I could have done a lot faster to get. For the other two laps, it would just be do, going through the uh, that path normally, I believe, yeah. by collecting the 50 rings. Which is for lap one. It's faster to do that. Yeah. So what this gear change allows him to do is basically just punch through all the cars and, and the breakable wall at the start of this path. And without it, it would be a lot more difficult to go through it to say the least. There's one more thing I haven't explained about gravity dives and their meteor burst. By smashing into objects, like like what you just saw there, he is able to earn his some of his GP back. Which is yeah, the the more GP you usually the better, obviously. You can go, uh, you can extend your gravity dives if you have GP more GP. So that's great. GP is very important for this game. And also rings as well. Like those were really two important things you want to prioritize. Like ideally, you want to get the gear unlocks as fast as you can. That uh, the gear chain you just saw the unlock is a GB gauge of. I mean, it's kind of obvious what it does, but to explain exactly, all it does is increase your max GP gauge to be 125 GP instead of 100, the usual 100. Which, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Since he was able to have enough rings collecting throughout the coins, he is able to do that. And also, what he just did there, I forgot to explain it. He tricked up the ramp and then gravity controlled onto a wall. wall and because uh, that, that's an intended path you, you can take in the game. But it is faster to go along that path, basically. Yeah. But yeah, that's essentially it to this track. It's maybe, it's pretty simple track. Compared to most yeah, of the other Yeah, I ones. feel like this is like honestly the easiest track in the entire run. If you're not doing any of the skips. In my opinion, at least. So up next is Snowy Kingdom. Folks in chat are talking about the unlockable characters and apparently oh. Billy Hatcher is one of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. Oh, I should explain real quickly about the start. So, Dill is actually timing the starts to make it so he gets full GP throughout the start of the races. So, you don't automatically get that. You have to actually do time your starts to make it so you have full GP, which is very important. Right here, Dilka is initiating a gravity dive. And it, normally for this path, you would do the same thing like was shown in Nice Air Rush, where you gravity control after tricking from a ramp, but it is faster in this case to just gravity dive from it. Maybe because um, Dill has a GP to do so. Same thing for here. After this ramp, you see uh, they're doing an, another meteor burst section, and here he's able to rack up a ton of GP. So it, it is easy; he can easily replenish it all and do all of what you saw on lap one in lap two as well. I'm I'm pretty sure he's aiming to unlock the third. Gear change? Yeah, you don't want to get the air ride at all for the stage. It's completely useless. Yeah. I'm pretty sure for all the tracks, you don't use air ride. Yeah, because you only play as enough. Way <laughs> on one track. And she has the air ride ability. Yeah. So. 
This and Tempest Waterway, which is a later track, are two tracks that heavily depend on gravity dives to be fast. So having that GP gauge up, gear change is important in the series. Yeah. And also getting X tricks or S tricks. Actually, you, you really just want to get X tricks as much as you can because it, it gives you. Like, also that RNG I get where I just randomly get it, get like GP. I love that. It's so good. But also sometimes it's not good. But Yeah, like how you saw earlier in Geek and Device where he had a chain ball up in, that in his gear. That is insane. <laughs> to be honest, like, I usually don't have that happen. But, you know, I'm not surprised. RNG is pretty rough in no extra skips in general. But yeah. <laughs> That's Snowy Kingdom. Next up is Meteor Tech Sparkworks, which contains, I'm pretty sure, the most broken skip you'll see in the run. And quote unquote, no ultra is... skips, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty funny. Yeah. How the real set is right now. But the begin the goal of the beginning of lap one is to collect 50 rings ASAP to be able to get the grind gear change. Which will be important for laps two and three. Because you wanna be able to do the shortcut all three laps. Oh, that's really cool. Nice! <laughs> okay, it's fine. Uh unfortunate. So this <laughs> Sometimes I'm pretty sure they will be fine here, but fine. if you get that item capsule like thing, you won't be able to re reform any actions basically. But thankfully, it happened right before, and that like in lap two or three. So this is the skip. Basically, what you do is gravity dive at a certain part of the ramp to be able to have your character be angled in such a way that you aimed right towards the top of the wall and since that top of the wall doesn't have any collision you're just able to phase through it and then afterwards you perform a gravity control to redirect yourself back onto the stage and you preferably want that respawn as well before the before the ramp so you're able to get the gp to do the meteor burst section you'll see the skip here toward me again I like how in the middle of Babylon's story we just have surprise Amy. Oh yeah, don't don't worry about that. I don't know why that why we're playing this early, to be honest. Well, like I said earlier, getting the grind uh, gear change, I consider it's pretty important because it makes it a lot either a lot more risky or not feasible at all. To be able to do the skip, you you really do need almost all the GP you have yeah. going up to it to be able to do this. And also, when I die here, I lose all my rings when I respawn, so I want to get as fast as I can. That's also why I never get the third unlock as well, is because I keep losing all my rings. Like, look, I'm back at zero. Yeah, that's true. You have you have to basically get all the rings at one respawn. So, yeah. and now one wipe, let's say. It's called a wife. Yeah. In this instance. But yeah, that skip saves a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> it is funny that it is in the no ultra skips category. But yeah. Up next is Tempest Waterway. And here, I, it, there are no other CPUs around you. It's just you. Uh, it's just Storm. Yeah. <laughs> the goal is just to do it as fast as possible. So here after this ramp that you see, Bill will perform a gravity dive and then do a turn skip basically. That saves a few seconds. That's easy. Oh. He's able to do that since he has a GP already. And then here you'll see Dill do another gravity dive and do something similar to what he did in Sunlight Kingdom. But this time, there are GP capsules scattered along the path, so he's able to continue his 
gravity dive through that. And then after this water slide, uh, he'll initiate another gravity dive with the GP gauge up gear change and be able to collect that, the GP max capsule, which is only available once uh, during the race. So it is important that he gets that. Lap 2 and 3 are essentially the same as Dock 1, except that since he has more GP, he's able to prolong his gravity dives. And yeah. <laughs> like, I can start it here, and I still have a lot, because I have some... Oh, oh. that could have been really bad, I just like... But yeah, you can you notice that, um, <laughs> like I said earlier, this is a very heavily this track heavily uses gravity dives. So yeah, this is. I'm pretty sure this is the slowest track, but. Oh I mean, yeah, it would be even slower without. What I got the right there in the item box, I love that as well. Oh, uh, there, um, they got a. I don't know what it's called in game exactly, but it's, it's just surprising. I player. am okay. It's fine. This is really slow now. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh, they'll fail to collect the uh, GP capsule in time. Yeah, it's fine. Though. The that ramp only... I missed, it's like really hard to miss because it's super small. And it's like the screen's also kind of dark, so I usually can miss that. But yeah, it's fine. And then the rest should just be normal. Yeah. Oh. Where's that? We're going. We got folks in the chat calling for a new Riders game, or at the bare minimum, porting Free Riders to the Better Connect. Or you know, yeah, I'd prefer be... Free Riders without the Connect if if they could make that happen. <laughs> it is a shame there hasn't been a Riders game in so long. It's so, true. Yeah. Like, I feel like they, they shot the series in the foot with Free Riders, and it's like, oh, people didn't like that, so people would never like another one. And it's like, what? No! <laughs> we would love a new one without full body motion control gimmicks. <laughs> it's pretty funny. But right there, uh, Dill went into the faster alternative path of the track. And, oh yeah, nothing much to explain there. He had, the, he had the grind gear change, so it's just faster to take, to go through these rails than driving normally. Also coming And up. you'll see here again that Dale goes through another alternative path. He'll be doing the second one, all three laps. Like the well, he'll go through, he'll go through all of them, all three laps. I mean, but but not gravity dive for the first one since he won't have much EP. But it's just. But that meteor burst section is very rough. Right. I don't know why it's programmed by that. Yeah, but it just breaks. It gives sometimes. you almost nothing. It just like the break, and I did another trick there because I didn't feel like missing this. So yeah. I remember one time, like this happened today as well. On those fans, if you like hit them frame one, you go backwards on the track. I don't know why, but that can happen. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> also, I have a lot of GP. That's pretty cool. Almost full. That's like, actually, pretty much as full. Oh my god. Yes, uh, the, I love that. <laughs> the, rest, the rest of the labs is pretty straightforward, I would say. Okay, that is literally the worst thing that could happen. They all broke and I have nothing. <laughs> oh my, oh my gosh. That is so unfortunate. Yeah. I'll do this again.
folks in chat talking about some of their favorite Sonic racing games. The Rider series had a lot of style and flair. Um, Sonic, uh, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed is still one of my personal favorites. Other folks are saying Team Sonic Racing was unsatisfying. I like TSR, not as much as ASRT, but um, it definitely, like, it had style and flair. It just didn't have support post-release, which was a big shame. It needed support post-release, and it also needed the ability to uh, kind of queue up in the online rooms with a team of friends predetermined rather than being assigned to random teams in the room. Yeah, that is true. Like, if you got a, a group of friends together in a private room in TSR, like, that was a lot of fun. Sonic Adventure 2 Kart Racing, someone brought up. Oh my god. True. On to the last track of the game, which is debatably one of the most simple, but also interesting tracks, in my opinion. Because this is the only one that has a boss in it. And also, I'm breaking the marathon, Even though I'm breaking the marathon <laughs> rules, because... Why am I playing as this guy? What the heck? I'm not supposed to play this guy. <laughs> Why? I just heard that. For playing a Sonic. As you will see in a little bit. Oh no. Yeah, I just <laughs> heard that. Start. <laughs> I did that twice. Okay. Uh, uh, you can see in the map, it is literally just a figure eight way up. But... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is also... You'll see. You'll see. Dill is trying to get 50 rings right now. And good thing he did, because this is important. Not not too important, but it does save a few a few milliseconds. You, you skip by like, going on the You skip the animation from right. the like gravity meteor burst thing. But yeah. Yeah, that is a good way to describe what happened. Because normally you would there there's a gravity dive startup animation that occurs and Oh, that just skips like that. Me. That's the, that's the start of the well. animation, and we're skipping out and we're on the rail. So. so this is the boss's second phase, where he uh, uh, attacks you with energy bolts, but they're very easy to avoid by just being near the side of the track. I forgot to explain, there are three total phases. The first lap, he does nothing to stop you. Just lets you attack. Yeah, and also, if the CPUs land a hit on him, that doesn't count for you, and you have to keep playing the track. But we're, like, a mile ahead, so it's fine. I don't gotta worry about that. I also forgot to mention that it is important that Dill does indeed hit the boss twice per lap, or else the lap wouldn't count. Yeah. Correctly. So... We're about to approach lap three here. This phase, the boss. Uh, this. Uh, I don't even know what that is exactly. They're meteors. Uh, I would think that's what I thought they were. <laughs> I yeah, think they're, they're meteors. meteors. I don't yeah. know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm blanking out. But the AI is horribly accurate with these uh, attacks. All you have to do is stay on the side, and you're fine. I love how sword. far behind the NPCs are if you look at the mini map. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, we're here too, I guess. <laughs> Dude, I got two speed boosts? This is a good RNG. Also, time is gonna come up when I cross the finish line. Not when I land the final hit. It's a, like one second after. And time. GG. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Like 10 seconds throw to my PB, so. I'll take that. That's pretty good, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that was that was a really cool run. Like I didn't say a whole lot because uh, Ariel was carrying us through commentary uh, on the technical yeah. side, but this is a really sick speed run. The gravity dive abuse is so cool to you. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. But um, do y'all have any shout outs that you want to do before we uh, head off and wrap up the event? Uh, before we start our replay of day two? 
<laughs> uh, well, shout outs to you guys, you and him, for organizing the whole thing. That's really cool. And also all the runners who got to submit and got in leather games. And also shout outs to Ariel for commentating. You're the you're a real one. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's no all I really have to say. Um, if you want to follow me, uh, I don't stream a lot. I got a new PC recently, so I might stream more. Um, I run a ton of other games, not just this. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and follow me. Yeah, that's it for me. Nariel, do you have any shoutouts yourself? Uh, not really, except for the community. Uh, they did find a lot of these skips and strats recently. Well, near recently, like in the past four years, the community has become a lot more active than in previous years. Mm -hmm. And the time has been the more significantly size. So it's great that they was able to show was able to showcase all of this <laughs> for all you to see. And I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't really stream too much, so I don't. I don't really want to link my Twitch. But if you do want to drop a follow, my my Twitch is Ariel MK1. I I do occasionally speed run this game as well in the any percent category, but I mostly am just I don't know. I play Geometry Dash, so there's that. <laughs> if you're interested. Yeah, thank you both so much for being here, for being the finale, for submitting the run. Yeah. So I really appreciate it, and that was a lot of fun. So that's going to bring us to the end of Sonic and the Sidekicks Day 2 and the end of the event as a whole. Uh, if you are watching this, uh, join, consider joining the official GDQ Discord and add the new hotfix role where you can keep tabs on upcoming events, talk with staff and showrunners, and chat with other GDQ watchers. Use exclamation point Discord and Twitch chat for more information. And if you like big events like this, uh, later this month, we're going to have our annual Juneteenth celebration uh, this upcoming June 22nd and 23rd. Use exclamation point Juneteenth and Twitch chat Twitch chat, that's a mouthful, to check out the schedule. And finally, uh, prize submissions for SGDQ are open now until June 16th. It's not too far off. If you're a crafty person and you want to check out the schedule at um, gamesonquick.com, see what games you might want to submit or create a prize for, um, go ahead and do that. Gamesonquick.com will give you all the information you need. So if you missed out on any of today's runs, stay tuned for a replay of day two. And there were a lot of really awesome things like the Sonic Dream Team race that kicked off the day. Uh, it's it's going to be coming up right after this next break. And tune in this upcoming Tuesday for our next live shows starting at 7 p.m. Eastern time as seen on TV and Express Lane. Until then... Make sure you're taking care of yourselves and each other. Happy Pride Month. Make sure you take your medication, your vitamins, drink water, take care of yourselves, get a snack if you need to, stretch your legs. Make sure that you're looking after yourself because you matter and you deserve all the best. We'll see you on the other side and thank you all so much for being here tonight. Have a great rest of your evening.